Hi. Um, how do I introduce myself? I'm I'm a I'm supposed to be a developer, um, uh, but jack of all trades. So basically, I'm supposed to be a developer, but I'm mostly. What do I do? Okay. Oh. Cut. <laughs> all right. So I'm a developer. Um, but I'm mostly working in civic tech, so basically I develop programs, uh, work on standards for government transparency. Yeah. So, you, can you elaborate further on how uh, civic tech and government transparency? Okay, so um, you have this concept of public goods. Um, so the traditional concept of a public good is something that um, affects, that is of, of benefit for everyone. Uh, but it generally doesn't make uh, profit sense to build. So an example would be, uh, for example, a police force. So if you think about a police force, everybody's protected by a police force, but it does not make sense um, if, if just one person pays for the police force, then everybody's protected by the police force. So public good is, in a way, things such as this in which um, is, is basically a good that is of benefit for everyone. Um, so in this case, civic tech is the same thing. It's to build the services, um, technology and apps that are of public benefit for everyone. Um, yeah. So, okay, I've worked with you before. So yeah. uh, we are both in Sina Project. So let's talk about Sina Project, assuming that not many people know about Sina Project. Okay. So, um, so generally, most people are aware of transparency groups. So you would know about Transparency International. Um, you'd be familiar, you know, with anti-corruption agencies like MACC. Uh, but generally, when you see these um, type of organizations, they usually don't have a tech focus to them. Um, usually, it's po policy and advocacy. Um, so Sina Project works in the same space as um, NGOs such as this but we work on using tech. So whereas a parliamentary reform civil society would say, please make the attendance available, CNA project will say, can we have this as open data so that we can build an app so that um, we can have it online and have it, the attendance records of the MPs as a, say, a website. Yep. So, okay, so, so here's a counter argument. Mm -hmm. uh, not many people can work with data. Why should we have data instead of having government will a site for us instead. Okay. Um, why should it? Okay. So the biggest the, the biggest problem with individual sites by government is that it doesn't cover every single use case. So uh, here's a good example of where a use case, uh, a specific use case for education, um, has extremely useful data, but the website doesn't support other use cases for this data. So an example would be the education ministry. So the education ministry is interested in having better students, giving a better education. So their use case would be parents and students. Um, as such, they collect data. For example, they'll collect data on student numbers. They'll collect data on the income of parents. Um, they'll collect income of health, um, status of health uh, for students, disabilities, and whatnot. So, if you let the government build an application the, for uh, for the education ministry, the government website will be. It can be a very good website, but it would only be of use to parents. Where do I enroll my kids? Um, and the internal data would only be used for internally by government. However, if you look at the data that the education ministry is collecting, they have income, uh, they have students, they have disabilities, and they have health. This is the kind of data that can be useful to build other applications. So, and quite often, this kind of applications or data is not in the same ministry as what the government is supposed to do. So, even with between government ministries, it's difficult for them to work together without open data um, and shared data. Uh, so as a result, CNA project comes in. At one level, we advocate for government to build it, uh, but we also, in in sometimes government needs also to need understanding in tech. How can this data be useful? We also do proof of concept uh, applications so that 
the government can see it's like oh okay uh, if the education government uh, if the education ministry releases this data then civil society for example like child abuse uh, or welfare agencies can now use this data to target families that really need welfare for example okay cool. so after this conference after the keynote what do you see from here well um, i hope to see that people see things differently uh, in terms of the use of the tools. Um, so a quite common problem when people are just learning tech uh, is that they often um, don't see the, all the possible uses of the tools uh, that they're learning at this conference. They, um, another thing is that, or the combinations these different talks have into building towards something else. Um, so I hope from this is that people think beyond uh, just the talks themselves, but as a collection of skills, uh, tools that they can use, um, not only just for doing things for good, you know, for the public good or civic tech, but also in their careers, um, in terms of hacking solutions, uh, rather than just specific silos of, um, of knowledge. Yeah. So, what next for... What next? Um, okay, so my hope is that I actually have a personal timeline of about five years. So Malaysia right now is in a kind of turning point. Uh, on the one hand, we've suddenly had a change in government. Um, a lot of the restrictions that we were, were working on before in terms of you know research and development, freedom of expression, um, student involvement um, in civil society, or even knowledge about civil society awareness is extremely limited. So my hope is that this is a key starting point in which we get some technologists and some students uh, to start thinking um, in terms of ways that they can do, um, ways they can be involved in a better democ democratic society as a whole. Um, so that in the next five years, Malaysia will now have the same things that we look up to. Um, that we might have a Python Foundation in Malaysia, uh, or we would have a Code for Malaysia organization. Um, and then we would have companies and techies supporting these organizations. Um, so more tech-focused civil society and, and, a more, and a society that's more aware of civil society, um, society that's more aware of the importance of the role of civil society um, and their role in the democracy, especially techies. Cool. Yep. So, I think that's all from now. Thanks for the interview. Is there anything else you want to say before? Uh, yep. So, if you want to... So, right now, the environment for this is extremely new. Uh, but we do uh, have an organization, which is what me and Swimming work for, which is Sina Project. And so, if you want to learn a start in learning about how to get involved in these things and understanding what problems Malaysia has to what steps Malaysia has to do before we catch up with the rest of the world. Um, go visit our website, sinaproject.org, pick an area that you would like, and join our community to uh, work with us. All right, so thank you very much. This is Freeman from Devcomi, signing off. <laughs>